All right, what's up everyone? So we are finally here at Mr. Olympia press conference. We saw last night the press conference happened and you guys saw all the bodybuilders gathered on stage. It was a bit different comparative to what we saw in the previous years, like everyone would sit on chairs and tables and would communicate one by one, but there were guys standing on stage, so it was uh, kind of different from the previous year. And we saw the champion, Big Rami, Brandon Curry, and Hadi Chupan, quite humble and down to earth and telling their journey and stories and the struggles they saw in the COVID period and how they have improved over time. So definitely these bodybuilders are ready to give their best shot at Mr. Olympia. And then we saw the another segment between the rest of the line of bodybuilders who took a dig at one another and we saw Andrew Jack actively participating in the conversation and uh, he was busy in uh, engaging uh, with other bodybuilders including uh, we saw that when Michael Crizzo arrived and he uh, without saying a single word he just removed his jacket off and he was uh, posing the next moment and they were all uh, kind of uh, taking a dig on him and uh, kind of uh, showing that they were not impressed but to be honest Michael Chris is one hell of a bodybuilder. His structure is impressive, and he was looking amazing. Uh, maybe not his ear at the moment, but in the coming years, if he is in the, going in the right direction, if he trains correctly, and if he has a good coach, so there is a huge uh, possibility that he was uh, he's going to easily climb up ranks. And Andrew Jack was looking quite impressive because uh, among the whole line of bodybuilders, Andrew Jack was looking the largest. And he was even towering over Michael Crizzo, uh, being uh, the tallest guy on stage then, and he was completely looking like a monster. Uh, standing next to Ian Valier and Nick Walker, he was completely dwarfing them out. So it is going to be very tough for a each and every single bodybuilder to uh, assume that they are going to win Mr. Olympia. Uh, this is not going to happen. This is going to be one hell of a battle. And among these bodybuilders, I am again this, saying this, that William Bonac is going to do some damage. I'm uh, quite excited to see what he brings to stage because he was at 265 pounds at the start of his prep. Recalling to the recent interview of Phil Heath where he said that William Bonac has a chance to defeat Big Rami because the aspect that is needed to defeat Big Rami is going to be conditioning. You gotta find out his negatives and that is where I believe if William Bonac manages to bring his best conditioning to stage, he is almost complete in every aspect. Uh, I don't see any lagging part in his physique and if he brings his conditioning to stage, he is going to do some real damage. So this guy is an older bodybuilder, he has a better mu muscle maturity and he can do the damage and uh, he must not be overlooked in this race to Mr. Olympia. Meanwhile, Derek Lunsford from 212 Olympia to Men's Open now is in the league and you guys can see that he was looking relatively smaller compared to these guys. But here again, if we recall to Phil Heath, as he said that he never focused on massiveness, instead he focused on quality. And if we, if we recall to the uh, videos of Derek Lunsford we saw in a couple of weeks, uh, you guys can see that uh, Derek Lunsford is quite an impressive bodybuilder with an amazing gifted physique where he has small waist and wide shoulders and amazing muscle bellies. So if he brings in the quality, so he is also going to be among the top five bodybuilders easily. While Hunter Labrada looked off comparative to what he looked weeks ahead of Mr. Olympia. In his recent pictures, he wasn't looking as good as he should be. And I'm hoping that he has improved uh, in these past couple of days and he brings something that is good enough to make his place in the top five. Uh, otherwise, there is a chance that he might fall back into the top five to 10 category and that is not going to be very nice because he improved on size, he improved on conditioning and if he is now off, then that won't be a good thing. So I'm hoping and I was really expecting Hunter Labrador to do some damage because his physique is quite masthetic. You guys can see that he also has a tiny waist compared to his wide shoulders and he looks quite monstrous when he's posing 
So I'm uh, hoping that he should bring something that is good enough and uh, do the damage and claim his place in the top five. And then came the guy who was a major highlight of this press conference, Andrew Jack. Andrew Jack was completely dwarfing everyone out with his monstrous size and height. He was like uh, dominating in the lineup. So I'm quite excited to see him on the show day. And uh, this is going to be very interesting if he brings in the conditioning. Uh, we saw him earlier this year and or better than that. So he is definitely going to do some real damage. And Ian Valier was also looking quite impressive as I also uploaded a video about his recent conditioning in my YouTube channel. And you guys can see that he is also one of those guys who are kind of uh, not uh, much discussed, but he is uh, pretty much impressive. His muscle bellies are amazing. Overall muscle roundness is there, muscle fullness is there, and his conditioning is also looking quite amazing. So this is going to be very interesting. And <clears throat> the thing is that in this Mr. Olympia, a lot of the guys who are not being discussed at the moment will upset the rest of the lineup. Andrew Jack was the most active guy on a stage and he took a dig on some of the bodybuilders like Ian Valier and Michael Crizzo. And then we saw Nick Walker arrived and he was looking confident. He shook hands with the Hunter Labrador and Derek Lunsford and communicated with the public, his fans. And he is looking confident because I believe he understands that his conditioning is uh, good according to him. He is dense muscular and we saw him transform in a matter of days. And then we saw Blessing Avodi who arrived and he just uh, took a dig on Nick Walker. And uh, there, as we know that there's a rivalry between these two guys, uh, he took a dig on him. And in return, Nick Walker said that he does not talk to anyone who plays in the third callouts. So it was kind of a funny and exciting conversation between the two bodybuilders. And uh, things are looking pretty heated up between these two bodybuilders uh, since long time now. So now in a matter of uh, hours, we are going to see what happens on Mr. Olympia stage. And then uh, Rafael Branda was called on stage and he is one of the finest bodybuilders from Brazil. And we saw his pictures uh, of his transformation in the uh, past couple of weeks and days and he was looking pretty impressive. He has packed on some real size comparative to the uh, past couple of years. And uh, this year it is his debut in the lineup and uh, we are going to see what he does to the lineup and where he places. And in the end, we saw Michael Crizzo arrived and he started posing right away. Meanwhile, Nick Walker and Andrew Jack seemed unimpressed and they took a dig on him and uh, kind of uh, tried to knock him down. But Michael Crizzo remained calm and uh, he did not respond much to them. And uh, Andrew Jack in return uh, said that we are going to see uh, what you're capable of on stage. Some of the bodybuilders were absent from stage like James Hollingshead and Charles Griffin IFBB Pro and we also uh, missed Samson Dowda. He is also one of the largest bodybuilders and uh, would have been um, uh, quite exciting if he was standing next to Andrew Jack and Michael Crizzo so we could have seen uh, the size comparison between these guys. So this was all the wrap up for the night and we are going to see some real action today and i'm quite excited to see all these bodybuilders on stage and i wish all of them a good luck and whoever is the best guy will win mr olympia 2022 thank you so much have a nice day